Final Score Friday with Sports Director Lane Casadante and Sean Robertson. Sponsored by Bojangles, Loyalty Automotive, and Richmond Pediatric Dentistry and Orthodontics. Good evening, everyone. It's week 11 of Final Score Friday. Sean and I are joined by the cheerleaders from Glen Allen tonight. Their Jaguars are headed to the playoffs. We'll show you their season finale in a few minutes. We start as we always do with our game of the week and this week we had a chance to showcase two of the best programs in the area who had a rare opportunity to play on Friday night under the lights. Trinity, Trinity and Benedictine has won the last few state championships for independent schools that could very well determine this year's title as well. The cadets had the top seed before this night and with that change if the Titans could pull off the upset. The final score Friday game of the week is sponsored by Bojangles. Trinity had won the last four in this series to include the last two state championship games in 21 and 22. Third quarter, Titans up 14 0 and looking for more when Davion Fats Brown adds to Trinity's lead with a 56 yard gallop for the score. 22 0 Titans after the two point conversion. End of the quarter, Cody Shelton keeps it and fights his way in for the score. Cadets down 22 7 after three to the fourth. Trey Grant gets in space, heads towards the sidelines for a big gain all the way down to the Benedictine 20. 140 yards on the night for Grant. And that will lead to this, taking Logan to Deuce Edwards for the touchdown. Titans up 29 to seven at that point. Good shot there by Caitlin. And they will go on for a 36 to seven win to finish their regular season at six and three. It's just a standard, this is what we do. Um, so we just need to get a little healthy. But you know, when you're playing nationally ranked teams um, throughout the year, you know, like we, we have two losses to teams in the top 100, one's in the top 20. So uh, we're just just getting healthy and doing our thing. He let that be known. Watch yes, out for them. Yes, he did. Watch out for them in the postseason. Up to Hanover, where the Hawks hosted number one Highland Springs. The Springers absolutely needed a win to have a shot at the top seed in Region 6A. First quarter, oh. snap goes over the head of Kiwan Harris out of the end zone for a safety, and the Springers have a 2 0 lead. You don't need to give them extra points. Nope. Second quarter, Eric Bird gone. 80 yards on the touchdown run here. They will not get him, and that makes it 9 0 Springers. Hanover out of deep in their own end. Nolan Chris is going to find Peyton Seelman, the Richmond bound Peyton Seelman, but he coughs it up and it's the intercepted, rather, by Brennan Johnson. That sets up Raymond Varner's 23 yard touchdown run. 16 0 Springers at the half. Hanover made it close in the second half, but the Springers pull away and win 30 to 13. We head down to the Tri-Cities. Thomas Dale needed a win over Petersburg to potentially keep their top spot in Region 6A. But would it be enough given the Springers' victory over Hanover? We pick it up early for Thomas Dale as NJ Hines fumbles and then recovers by Xavier Turner. Petersburg gets nothing on that play, but then Nick Tyree gets on the scoreboard with the touchdown, but this was called back for holding. So then Jonathan Gates comes in, nails a 38-yard field goal to give TJ, uh, give T TD rather, Thomas Dill a 3-0 lead. Then in the second, Ethan Medley to Shamari Earls down inside the red zone. That would lead to Hines with a 20-yard run. Knight, first 10-0 season under head coach Kevin Congrats. Tucker. Congrats. They get a 24-0 win over Petersburg. Both Matoica and Dinwiddie will make the postseason. The winner tonight would ensure at least one home game. The Generals have won 12 of the past 13 in this series, and they were up at the half 28-14. Third quarter, Harry Dalton. Uh-oh. What he does. 81-yard touchdown run right into your living room and out the back door. That makes it 35-14. Already, that was his fourth touchdown of the night. Then Raphael Tucker. Really nice one two punch on the uh -oh. ground for the generals. This goes 54 yards. That makes it 42 to 14. Tucker would punch one more in again from three yards out and the Dinwiddie defense would do the rest with a Joshua Adams interception. Generals roll 49 to 28. They're getting hot at the right time of the season. We head out to the West End for Glen Allen. They're on the road at Mills Godwin. The Jaguars trying to hold on to at least one home playoff game next week. Jags were up 17-0 at the half. Godwin comes up with a big interception. Camden Tiller returns it for the touchdown, the pick six. 
Actually, rather, it was Godwin got picked off and Camden Tiller scores. It was 24-0, but then Mills Godwin would get on the ball with a touchdown to make it 24-7. Glenn Allen returns Javante Wilson with a 32-yard catch. Jags, Cruz possibly getting the four seed and Regis 6A 45-7 over Mills Godwin. And if they get that four seed, they get to host Oscar Smith oh, next boy. week. We've got plenty more to go on week 11 of Final Score Friday. Stay with us.